everyone welcome back to my channel so i've been away for ages because basically i just finished university thank you fucking jesus when i tell you i wanted to give up like two fucking years ago okay that's enough story for this video anyway i was so over uni like i'm just I'm just grateful that I actually finished my course and it's all done. So as you can tell by the title of this video, this video is going to be about me and my sickle cell experience. Oh my gosh, I feel so nervous now. <laughs> like before, when I set up to do this video, it seemed like a great idea. I was like, oh yeah, I'll tell people about my experience with sickle cell. You know, I'll share the light on the disease that people don't know about. But now, like saying it out loud, it makes me nervous. Okay, let's just take a minute. So first of all, when did I find out I had sickle cell? Well, lucky for me, I found out from birth and um, yeah, pretty much that's how it goes. So I've been having a crisis since I was like a little girl. I wouldn't know the little girl type of, you know, sickness when I was a little girl, but I mean, my mum told me about it. So yeah, like, I don't know, I'm fidgeting now because I'm so nervous. <laughs> Like, I don't really want to go into detail, like, what is sickle cell, you know, like, explain the disorder, explain the blood grit, the cells, you know, SS, AS, SC, don't, like, you can Google for all of that type of stuff, like, to be honest, half of you should already know this by now, and it really upsets me, like, when I say, oh yeah, I've got sickle cell to other black people, and they're like, what is that? And I'm just there, like you don't know what that is like how can you not know what sickle cell is like it's a disease that's you know in our community as to say but like it is what it is isn't it I, sh I guess i could shed light in this video when i was younger i legit used to hate well to be honest i never really told anyone that i had sickle cell apart from like one of my friends and all my other friends in school, they'll always be like, oh my gosh, Delani, why are you not in school? What past week? Like, you know, we miss you. Why didn't you come to Finny's birthday? Why didn't you come to Finny's uh. And I always used to be like, oh yeah, you know, I was sick. And they'll be like, you were sick? And I was like, yeah. And they'll be like, oh, what was wrong? And I'd just be like, oh, my back hurt. And they'll be like, okay. Like, it was so it was so easy, like, when you were younger to just be like, oh yeah, my back hurt. And they'll be like, until like, I was in about, like, year 10. And then someone must have been like to me, I must have said again, like, oh, my back was hurting, I had to go to the hospital. And they were like to me, you went to the hospital because your back was hurting. And I was like, yeah, like it was really bad. And they were like, so why did you go to the hospital? And I was like, okay, well, because I've got sickle cell. And they were like, what's that? And then obviously me being young, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I've got something to tell you guys. Let me tell you the gist. Let me tell you the 411. So I'd be like, okay. You know, it's a genetic blood disorder. I got it from my mum and my dad. And like, you know, it gives me a lot of pain, red tear, tear. But now it's just like, I don't really want to explain it unless I like have to. And it's just like, it's just long, in it? It's just whatever it is, what it is. And I really hate the fact that like, even my teachers, like even at uni, <sighs> sweet baby Jesus, give me strength. They'll be like, oh, Talani, we understand you're unwell, we understand your condition, but at the end of the day, you've still got to do the work like everybody else, like, so-and-so, for instance, her work is amazing, like, she, she, she got it all done, even though the lack of time that she had, I'm thinking to myself, excuse you, number one, you clearly don't understand what I'm going through, number two, she had less time. These times, I'm pretty much in pain every other day. I'm in hospital, and if I'm in hospital, I'm in hospital for like a week. And you're telling me she didn't have enough time. But these times, she's healthy, she's fine, she can run around. She can she can go around in the rain. She can fly like a chicken if she wanted to. Because sickle cell was like kind of hard. Like, I didn't really enjoy it. All I knew, like, if anyone asked me now, all I knew is that I couldn't do everything. Like, I couldn't do the things other people could. So, like, I couldn't go out as much as everyone else i couldn't go out in the rain i couldn't go out in the snow i couldn't go out when it was too cold like if it was like proper windy i'd have to be like in a library like it was just it just seemed like such a fucking arsehole that's what sickle cell seemed like it seemed like a fucking arsehole you know when something is just like blocking just, just blocking your way that's exactly what it seemed like and it was just so annoying it was so frustrating like especially when i started growing like into puberty and stuff it was even worse oh my gosh it was even worse so everybody else all my friends yeah they were like all busty and all like grown and then i was just tiny 
Nah, like my legs would just be walking like this, like little sticks, yeah. And all my friends would all have big boobs, like big bums. Oh, why do I always have friends with big bums? Anyway, big bums. <laughs> And I was just there, all twiggy, and then I would go to my doctor and I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not growing, my friends are so much bigger than me, red to And they'll be like, you know you're a slow developer, red to And I was just like, I just want to develop, like, I don't bloody care about being a slow developer. I don't fucking care if sickle cell was the cause of all of this, like, I really just want to develop. Like, I just wanted to be like everybody else, not even everybody else, but I just wanted to be healthy to be honest because i thought like if i was healthy i'd be pretty much normal because like, i could do everything else everybody else could do and i could just like have fun like everybody else like me my fun i feel like when i was younger my fun was limited to what i could and couldn't do and <laughs> i'm laughing now because i'm thinking back on all the things that i did yet yeah, knowingly that i shouldn't really do but i'm so happy i did them like some of the times like there was one time, uh, for instance, my doctor was like, you shouldn't do too many activities, you know, because it'll make you sick, it'll put you into a crisis. And I was like, and then, what was it? It was Fright Night. Yeah, my, uni, my, my secondary school was going to Fort Park for Fright Night. And I was like, Psh, I'm there. Um, we go on this trip now, go to Fright Night. And if you know what Fright Night is anyway, it's like, you know, Fort Park in the night time and bloody winter. Like, when I tell you, it was, it was chipping it was chipping outside it was so cold to the point towards the end i was regretting it. i was like talani you're just not even gonna make it home like in this coach yeah you are going to have a crisis and sure enough yeah i, I went into the water rides who asked me to go into water rides in the winter i went into the water rides i went into all the rides to be honest with you i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna have a good time and then when i was on the coach home like i could just feel pain in my legs yet yeah, and i was i knew what was coming in it so then i was just like you know what it's calm let me just go home take one of my strong painkillers yet yeah, and i'll go straight back to sleep <laughs> three o'clock in the morning like clockwork i told you my crisis is literally like clockwork as soon as it hits three o'clock in the morning if i don't sleep from 3 a.m till the next morning it's me in a and e anyway um, so if I keep sniffing, I'm literally just recovering over a cold, like, I was sick last week. Anyway, so, yeah, lo and behold, I didn't sleep from 3am till 4.30, I creeped to my mum's and I was like, I went, mommy, mommy, we have to go to the hospital. And she's like, are you sure? Like, is it a serious one or is it one that will just go down? I was like, no, mommy, no, mommy, it's not going down, it's not going <laughs> It's not going down. Oh my gosh. Anyway, get to A and E now. And then they were like, Oh Talani, you've been doing so well. Is there any activities that you've been doing that could, you know, bring this crisis on? And I was like, Yep. And she was like, Really? She was like, What is it? I just saw park and it was so much fun and I had a blast. I like, it was so much fun, yeah, and I don't regret it. And she was just like, Okay, okay. And she just like marked it down in like, you know, my um my file and i was just like okay that was easy but legit when i was going through the pain yet yeah, and it was killing my back was killing me my back was killing me my legs was killing me my shoulders were killing me everything was legit killing me yeah but i was smiling on the bed i was just like thought park was so much fun when i was chilling with my friends when i was talking about so and so when i was looking at this boy like all of them things yeah I was just lying on the bed remembering them, yeah, and then it took away the pain. Anyway, and then growing up with sickle cell, like being like an adult, as to say, I feel like it's much easier. Like I legit haven't had a proper crisis for like a year and six months. Um, I'll do another video on like how I stay healthy and like crisis free, so to say, and how I manage my pain. And look after myself if you guys want a video like that just leave a comment below or let me know what other type of videos you would like to see like about my sickle cell and lifestyle and whatever anyway growing up with sickle cell it wasn't as hard as it was when i was younger i think it's because like i'm my own woman now and like if i don't want to do something i don't want to do something like when i was in school if i had if someone asked me oh do you want to come to so and so's party it's going to be fun and i would be like no, because I knew I was going to be sick afterwards. Like, 
now if someone says do you want to go and i'll be like no they'll be like why i'll be like because i'm tired like at the end of the day i can say whatever i want it's my own life but like, i'm not doing things because i feel like i'm gonna lose this friend or i feel like cause i'm gonna be uncool or whatnot like i really don't even give a shit at this point like I just grew to be my own person and I feel like when you have sickle cell it makes you more confident it makes you and it, it makes you more confident and it definitely definitely makes you grow faster than your age I believe that for sure for sure but when you live with a long-term sickness you look at life in a different way like we all know it's like tomorrow is a promise like anything can happen we can get hit by a bus heck I could go to Nando's right now and like a bus driver could just fly into Nando's and that's me and my legs gonna be like this but at the end of the day yeah everything you do you work harder for like you're continually being pushed like even when you're in pain you're like oh i'm not gonna let this pain stop me i'm not gonna let this pain do this to me to do that to me so you never limit yourself you continue to do whatever you want to do and i feel like that's what's made me a strong and a really confident person i would say because i know some other people who are my age and they'll be like oh my gosh Tanani, you're so strong i don't know how you do this i don't know how you do that and at the end of the day i believe it's because my disease is what pushes me and god is with me at the same time so regardless like the things that i do to myself like some things that i don't even need to push myself to do i still do it because no one wants to be a failure like at the end of the day no one really wants to be a failure no one wants to be sitting at home thinking to myself oh my gosh why didn't i do this why didn't i do that and i've got like limited time to live you know another thing is i don't feel like i don't look at my life thinking oh my gosh i'm gonna die soon i'm gonna die you know this or this crisis is gonna take me i legit stopped crying when i'm in when i have crisis when i was like 13 14 because i've legit realized it just doesn't do anything it just doesn't help the pain it just doesn't it doesn't help the pain it doesn't help how you feel and to be honest the last time I cried when I had pain, shit, I was probably like, I think I was like 18, 19, yeah. I remember this day, I was coming from Southampton. I was already in hospital in Southampton. Then I left Southampton because, like, they weren't treating me right anyway, whatever. Came to my hospital in London. And then um, they basically changed all the protocol in London. And they were still using my old protocol in Southampton, innit? So they were giving me IV morphine. And then the one in London, they're like, oh no, we don't do IV morphine. And I thought to myself, oh my God, these people are finna kill me today. They're finna kill me. Like, you know when you go to hospital and they're just refusing to give you morphine? It's like, you legit can see. You can see the blackness in that tunnel. Like, you don't see no light. You can see that this doctor right here, this doctor right here is trying to kill me and legit that's what i said to him i said to him you're trying to kill me anyone who says to me we don't have no morphine we don't have no painkillers i feel like you're a fucking murderer you are a fucking butcher you're a butcher and you're not helpful to life you don't need to become a doctor you can just go and become a gp because gps don't do anything they just sit at their table and they don't do nothing that i will refer to that one in another video because them gps be slacking anyway so um yeah so I had to transition into I no I am morphine and that was just like that was legit the biggest struggle of my life I'm not gonna lie to you it felt I don't, I don't know how to explain it you know when you're already on a painkiller that helps you so much and then you go into another painkiller and it's pretty much just like not taking all the pain away and you're already coming from an aggravated pain so it's like you need something that needs to work instantly and you know how morphine just 20 minutes you know it's gonna start working yeah i am morphine i'm not even joking to you my shots are every 90 minutes yeah from that second shot is when i start it don't even start sometimes it don't even start to work but when it's like a good type of crisis here when i go in early that second shot yeah you can start to feel something something yeah but half of the time it don't my painkillers don't even kick in until like, I swear to you, like the second or third day. It's so bad. Like, oh. the only thing I legit hate about sickle cell is the constant, constant pain. Just being in constant pain. Just like, if it's not one thing, it's another. Like, recently I haven't had no crisis. By the end of the day, I've had other problems with like my shoulder and stuff like that. I feel like, it's just like, it's always a constant pain. It's just, 
to stop it lingering. I feel like it's a bloody leech. It's always lingering there. It's just like chilling, like for no damn reason. It's just always there. It really pisses me off sometimes. Sometimes it just like gets in the way of just like general life. So the best thing that I've learned growing up with sickle cell is having a routine and definitely definitely eating the right things eating and eating and drinking is one of the best things you can do for yourself honestly if you find the right diet that works for you if you can exercise exercise like i don't exercise because i'm lazy let me just be honest i really just sometimes i really hope that i don't like cross paths with one of you like team fitness like oh my god you need to eat broccoli and spinach every day or like you know <laughs> them proper team fit type of people because i'm just not one of them we try and maintain a healthy weight don't be too big don't be too small i try and drink as much water as you can and um yeah this is my first video talking about sickle cells so i feel like some points i've missed out on some points i've just like breeze through kind of but I feel like it can it might help somebody I don't know I hope it does just know that at the end of the day if there's no one there for you God is always there for you and second of all what else have I learned your pain is probably not going to kill you so at the end of the day your pain will not kill you it will only make you stronger and like I said, I use my disease or condition, whatever you call it, I use it to push me into anything that I want to do in life. I never limit myself because at the end of the day, the healthiest of people still die. So whatever it is that you want to do, just put your mind to it and do it. Like, I know sometimes it seems like, oh no, maybe I can't do this course, I can't go to uni because, you know, I'm going to be sick all the time or my sickness is going to stop me. No, it's not going to stop you. It'll only stop you if you want it to stop you. You can try and manage your condition. You can try and, you know, like work around it. Maybe if you can only do part a part-time course at uni, like if you want to become a doctor, like there's people who've become all sorts of things with sickle cell. I mean, look at TLC. If I was bloody TLC, <laughs> my mum would be stoked. Like, my mum, sometimes I used to think she was, like, legit the worst because she would always be like, Danani, like, what is wrong with you? And I'd be like, I've got a crisis. She'd be like, there's people who can't walk. There's people who can't even chew their food. There's people who have to get their food fed to them through, through tubes. And I'd be like, this woman just doesn't get it like she just doesn't get what I'm talking about she thinks I'm just like here chilling in pain lying down complaining but I'm in actual pain but as I grew up I realized that she is right like all the things she used to say to push me I'm so grateful for her all the things that she used to do to push me it came in handy so now when I have like minor back pain or minor leg pain I tell myself like there's been worse like I've had pneumonia there's been worse you know like I've had a chest infection and a crisis and been stuck in fucking Southampton in the snow. There's been worse. So, <laughs> there's literally always been worse to a situation. So you've always got to remember that things can be worse. And if it is at your worst, then you've got to remember things can always get better. Because so at the end of the day, don't let your health and maybe your size determine what you're going to be. Because I know some people, because when I was younger, I used to... I, and she stops wearing because when I was younger I used to hate being slim like I'm not even joking I used to be to my younger sister oh my gosh oh my legs really this skinny I would legit I would legit show her pictures of girls who had like twig stick legs like this like this is it even focusing yeah twig stick legs like this and I'd be like does my legs look like this does my legs look like this I even ugh. I used to ask her all types of things like I just used to hate being skinny and obviously she's like she's only got AS so she was big she was bigger she was plump like she looked like a normal kid and everyone would always be like oh is that your older sister and I'd be like no I'm the older sister like you know like let's not be rude about it anyway so I guess if some of you are like really small or some of you are like really young and you're dealing with sickle cell patience and time is the best thing time heals everything and it really is true because at the end of the day you will not stay small forever 
if you think you're gonna stay small forever you're not gonna stay small forever you will grow i mean you have to grow it's how the world goes like things like they say things can only get better when it's at its worst you will grow like your age you will develop in age as you get older your body will change it really will happen like i know some of you might be thinking oh my gosh no i'm bloody like 17 and i have no tits like they will grow oh my gosh i love it because i think i was like 14 15 that's because i was like oh my gosh my bits are big and like they will grow like give it time like at the end of the day you've got to love your body embrace your body work with what you have if you've got sickle cell work with your sickle cell make it work for you at the end of the day that means you can take more time off than anybody else if you're skinny and you're t and you're tall become a model if you're just skinny for nothing just skinny like me just become just stay skinny it doesn't matter like you can't feed yourself till you die to be fat you know you just gotta work with what you have at the end of the day if you've got really like yellow eyes work with it it doesn't matter at the end of the day there's other people with sickle cell who have really yellow eyes like non-stop it doesn't matter like i know these things we all pick them out but it doesn't matter at the end of the day we are in a multicultural world where you think people are looking at you but really and truly it's your own insecurities picking at you once you learn to live with yourself no one is watching you as bad as you think they are so anyway i hope this video helps someone or you know took the time off their crisis if you're watching it as you have a crisis sorry for the pain you'll get better you definitely will and if that nurse is taking the piss just know that god is on his throne and he can strike anybody at any time so i hope that helps because legit that helps me go through the day when i have a crisis anyway we're not going to go back to nurses because if i go back to nurses i'm going to be thinking about last week and i don't want to be thinking about last week so anyway guys stay strong stay hydrated as they like to say stay strong stay hydrated and stay well and um yeah i'll just keep up the videos and thank you all for watching i hope that you subscribe watch more of my videos i will be bringing more videos up soon as soon as i can